This is going to be a super simple paint job and essentially this is all I'm going to be using for it. So I've got one of my lure blanks. I'm using an Iwata Eclipse, which this is a good airbrush, but you don't need something this expensive. I'll link this and a budget friendly one that still works really well in the description. Wicked Colors by Createx. Again, you don't have to use this exact paint. That's the beauty of it. Do what you want. The majority of the painting is going to be done with uh, these brushes. Probably going to be this tiny one, quadruple zero size, and a little bit of mesh. You can find these on shower loofahs. I think I got all of this material from like a wedding gown or a wedding dress or something that I found at the thrift store. Yeah, so like one wedding dress supplied me with like an endless amount of this stuff. So yeah, go to your local Goodwill and uh, just grab you a wedding dress or something and you'll have plenty of skill material. All right, we're gonna start by covering this whole thing in foil. Foil. After you've spent a couple of hours working on that, next thing we're going to do is polish it and bring out the shine. We're going to use this and don't forget to shake this stuff first. Hmm. You could use a rotary tool for this. It would make it quicker and you probably have a little bit better result, but you can do it by hand just with a paper towel like I'm about to do. And you can see how quick it's cleaning any oxide off of the aluminum. Now you're going to take a dry paper towel and buff it out. You can see the difference between shiny and not shiny. Not bad. Not too bad. Next step. Alright, the next step here is going to be jet black. All right, I'm gonna mainly be shooting this across the back and in the eye sockets. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is add our mesh. The only thing I'll really say about this step is if you don't have some type of clear base over top of what you already painted, it's very easy to scratch the paint that you put over top of this really slick, shiny foil. So you just want to be careful when moving the mesh around because it will scratch the paint that's on there. That should do. All right, so for this white, I'm going to try to hit these scales at a very steep angle, like that steep. It's not that big a deal on this paint scheme. Right now the goal is to basically just get some white, mainly over top of this top edge. All right, let's see if that worked out with the scales. Oh, and look, you can see where the uh, paint was scraped off right on the front and you can see the foil underneath which that's not a huge deal we're going to be painting over it anyway all right we're going to put some white down the belly all right we're switching back to black briefly This next part is optional, but I like doing it just because I like to bring out more of the shine from the foil tape. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a dry paper towel and because the paint lifts off so easy, you're basically gonna distress it along this lower edge 
with a dry paper towel. So as soon as I start wiping, you can see it pulls, it pulls paint away. All right, we're gonna start out with some gray. I like to just kind of squirt my paint right on the table. Put a little water to the side. And the first thing we're gonna do is outline the gill plates. This part might seem kind of tricky at first, having nothing to go off of, but trust me, it's really not that hard. We're basically gonna do three plates. None of this has to be perfect because this is just your base layer. Next, you're gonna have a smaller gill. This is gonna come off from right here and curve under. And then your third one is gonna go around the first two. And once that first layer of paint starts drying, it'll be easier to apply your paint to it. But actually, I'm gonna stop right here and show you a little closer. This is what we're looking at so far. So it's not supposed to look crazy impressive yet. You just have to trust the process. Now we're basically gonna fill in all of this gill area. You're gonna do another layer of this once it starts drying. So don't pull your hair out trying to get it to cover. All right, right at the top, we're gonna sharpen out the points just a little bit. Now we're gonna start going around all of the little curves and mouth area. And we have a little nostril here that we're gonna try to go around. This will all stand out a lot better whenever you move to the white. All right, so now I've got a lighter gray mixed up. And actually, if you want, it might be easier. You could probably just start with this instead of starting with the dark gray because it's kind of hard to see all the separation between everything when you're painting the dark gray over top of the black. One of the techniques I like to use instead of brushing is to just kind of dot the paint on. All right, let's move on to the white. I'm just gonna put the white over top of these little cuts and just kind of dot it in. Like right in this corner right here, this is a good example. So I pretty much covered that little corner in white, but coming away from it, I'm gonna kind of dot it out so it kind of fades but certain areas i want to keep a hard white edge like right down here on this little mouth plate thingy and like right here on the lip and just kind of follow those dots over a little bit now back to the gill plates i'm actually going to outline these in a white just to make them stand out more and you see i'm just kind of dotting that white in and I'm going to come in from the corners of the gill plates, like right in here, at the corner of this first gill plate. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep dotting and I'm going to go up in little lines. I think that has kind of a cool effect. And if you want anything more pronounced, you know, you just go back through and make more pronounced little dots and remember we're curving this so just keep all these lines following that curve Thank you. 
Now you can actually do this with either a white on top or a gray on top. So I'll put an image right here of what it looks like if you use a gray through these gills instead of the white, which is a pretty good effect too, but I'm just deciding to do the white for this one. The next step is gonna be putting some of the solid white over top of these scales. And you don't have to do all of them. Pretty much just start somewhere and you're gonna put it on the back side of the scale. And just keep adding it until you're content with it pretty much. I did the other side a little bit better because I wasn't hovering over the camera. So the one other step that you could do with this is to add a little bit of chrome detail. I would only use this for like highlighting stuff. I wouldn't, you know, cover big areas because once you put clear coat over top of it, it kind of dulls it. Another thing I like about this marker is you can do some pretty cool signatures on your bait. I didn't sound that very well, but you get the idea. I use a Pigma Micron to do the actual signatures on my lures. I'm doing a terrible job at signatures today. 